music from friends and musicsubmit.com. Woohoo! Let's talk about the music is starting. What is Let's Talk About the Music and why are you so excited about it? It's a podcast with controversial talk and a global mix of music. Oh, cool. How and where can I listen? Just go to Let's Talk About the Music.com and click follow to be sure to get all the info about the bands that are playing and see their music videos. Then click on Spreaker or iTunes to listen live and even chat with other listeners and the host herself. What day and time is Let's Talk About the Music on? Every Wednesday night from 8 p.m. to midnight Pacific Standard Time. I think I'll tune in. Thanks for the info. Hey, everyone. Want to know how you can help Let's Talk About the Music stay on the air and earn some VIP privileges at the same time? Go to patreon.com slash LTATM radio to find out how you can get involved. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Let's talk about the music. Magical Things offers fantasy art for festival and everyday living, featuring the fine arts and craft creations of Marjorie Delaney on practical printed products such as journals, mugs, costuming, wearable art, formal wear, and accessories. We also carry a line of magical supplies, including candles, oils, herbs, and limited ritual items. All items are created in a scenic studio space in Culpeper, Virginia, and available throughout the world online, as well as at festivals and events. Magical Things offers custom creations too, such as costuming, illustrations, and more. Come visit us at MagicalFantasy.com. Alrighty, if you guys listen to Spotlight, our first and only show of it, Julian from... Erotic City asked to come back on the show on Let's Talk About the Music, the humorous controversial talk show, Global Mix of Music. And, uh, well, we're going to get him back on here November 9th, and we are going to talk about his independent musician side instead of just his tribute band to Prince. It's all gets started right here, November, t- November 9th starting 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. More details, go to letstalkaboutthemusic.com. This is Scott Gurley, one-man rock band from Whittier, California, and you are listening to Let's Talk About the Music.
Oh, hey, it's us. We're back. Let's talk about the music. Yeah. And that was Scott's song, King Kong. One Man, Kong, Kong, One Man Rock yeah. Band. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Now tell us a little bit about that song before we get into our, ne- our next big area of discussion. What, what's King Kong all about? Okay, so King Kong was, uh, was the reason that I wrote that tune, or the reason that I uh, wanted to have that song on the show is for a couple of reasons. Technically, and the recorded quality of that song, I felt was uh, probably uh, uh, at where I had reached a certain level, particularly with the drum sound on that and uh i i thought the song was solid um i got uh, i got an offer from a company in uh, uh this is really cool i got an offer from canadian american records which is the very first american uh rock and roll record label that was the record label to bill haley and the comets and to give you a, yeah. to to give you a little to give you a little background about that, um, Bill Haley, uh, when they got picked up and signed uh, to to their first record company, they didn't really know what to call that music. Now, Bill Haley came out two years before Elvis Presley did, and I got a call from the keyboard player uh, Joey Wells, and I was in Sedona earlier this year in february and out of nowhere i I was uh, with my family and i got this call and i didn't recognize the number i picked it It was from uh uh, this little town called lidditz i picked it up he goes is this scott girling and i said yeah and he goes one man rock band scott girling i go yeah this is scott and he goes buddy you rock and i (laughs) um i thought well thanks who is this and he explained who he was um, he's the original keyboard player for Bill Haley and the Comets. No and it way! Floored me. So what, what, what blew my mind about that was that from the birth of rock and roll, the keyboard player who has a record company that, that maintains Canadian American records had heard me through the same source that you did, uh, which is, um, I can't think of it right off the top of it my head right now because it's uh what's the name of that uh well anyway it's um right right, music submit he he heard it off a music submit and uh he just told me that he goes i i love your music i really think you're on to something with this kind of music and uh i i would like to represent you and it floored me because imagine someone from the earliest stages of rock and roll grabbing through to me who's an uh, unknown up to 2016 saying, dude, you're great. Uh, uh, unbelievable. It was just an unbelievable honor for this guy to call me up and sign me up to uh, Canadian American. And uh, I just thought that was really cool. And um, I said, well, hey, you, you got to check out this video because I made out, uh, it was a, I made a video to King Kong too. And the video is completely other than the music. And I, uh, because, um, what I did with the video for King Kong was I made a video challenge to the Foo Fighters. And I said, this is a challenge to the Foo Fighters to make a harder rock song about overcoming your fears. And uh, I, I created the video. I dedicated it to them. I uh, named them by name and then just blasted into the song. So that's a little bit of history of the song King Kong there. Cool. Cool. Now, did they? Uh, did the Foo Fighters ever respond? No, not yet. But no. uh, it, 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 soon enough, they will. Well, Dave Grohl is a pretty cool guy from everything that that I know of. And uh, if anybody's going to pay attention and and really get into something like that, Dave Grohl would be the guy. <laughs> I thought so too. I don't know. Sooner, sooner or later, it's going to come across. Uh, it's going to come across his frame of reference. That's how I look at it. That's right. Okay, so this is the moment that everyone's been waiting for. Kind of. Ooh, drum roll, We've please. Got two segments going on here. First off, since you know we don't want to be too far one way or the other, and and act like we're like oh da, 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 and and be all on our soapboxes here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give Scott, we're gonna give Scott the remainder of this half hour to give us his views, his political views. 
and how they've influenced his music and everything like that. We're going to give him some free reign to kind of wander around in that territory for a while. This is uninterrupted Scott time. Okay? Okay, everybody? (laughs) Uninterrupted Scott time. I know. I know. It's going to be hard. We're probably going to get a bunch of people trying to call in already. Just, you know, hold your horses. You'll get your chance. Scott is more than prepared for you. (laughs) <laughs> so anyway so yeah so this is this is how scott feels about the current political landscape um you are of course a avid supporter of a certain mr donald trump correct this is yeah this is the fact he he and he will be the next president there has never been a doubt in my mind even at the lowest periods um of his uh, just even the past few months where he just got kicked in the stomach with, uh, you know, the sex offenders. So I, I, I don't ever doubt it. This guy will be, um, it's already written as far as I'm concerned. And we're just waiting for six days until he actually waltzes in and, um, gets what he's after. That's how I looked at it. I, and I wasn't an immediate Trump supporter because I never really paid attention to it. I don't think until like, uh, November of last year. And I, I listened to what his platform was like, hey, we're going to build this wall and uh, we are going to, we're just going to take take care of our citizens here and uphold the law the way that it is meant to be upheld and has been written for as long as I've been alive, which means illegal aliens, if they're here illegally, you got to go back. We don't give them uh, a free pass into the United States, much less with the... Um, United States Census will tell you, which is, there's 11 million of them here, but I adamantly disagree with that number because it hasn't been updated in about 12 years. So the number, in my estimation, is probably closer to uh, 35 million uh, illegal immigrants here. And um, you might determine and people assume that that's a very racist thing to say, but the the fact of the matter is, uh, it's anything but racist. I am uh, vehemently, vehemently opposed to any racist. I have zero tolerance for racism at all. But um, by the same token, if you're here illegally, I'm sorry, you got to go home. You're an expensive. Uh, you're 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 an expensive body that is here taking up uh, virtually twelve thousand dollars per person per year that is not going into American citizens. And we are dedicating it to those people who didn't play by the rules, came in under the wire, under the guise of they want a better life. And that's a wonderful thing. But uh, there have been many, many immigrants who have done it the right way. And uh, it has to be done the right way. Now, and um, that's what I believe. My grandparents were a set of those people who actually uh, immigrated in from uh, Canada. It took them five years each to get in. They had to have 10000 bucks in a the bank. They had to be vetted by the government. They had to be uh, proved.